Ho ho ho, chase ghosts, come sleep, sleep, watch out, demons are coming, run, sleep, hide, spirits, run. ghosts, ghosts, hide, ghosts. demons, ho ho, ghosts, demons are coming. Hello, my little hellhounds. Welcome to Home of Scares. If you like the chills running down your spine and to be scared, fueled with anxiety, then join us twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And don't forget to increase your anxiety levels. Make sure you subscribe. Sleep tight, my hellhounds. <laughs> Creepy encounter walking home. Posted by Unethical Energy. I got high for the first time at a party. My best friend invited me to. It was a white version of a trap house. I saw something in the house that scares me to this day, but it's not related. But after that, I told my friend we can't stay here since he's a bro. He agrees and we walk back three miles back to his house at one in the morning. We're a mile from his home and there's a long road that curves slowly and for a while and it was already kind of creepy with some street lights broken and flickering on and off and turning on and off every minute. Close to his house is wooden in between houses, so no houses around. And so we're talking and looking forward and this school bus that has fully tinted out windows, some broken and boarded up windows, just slowly creeping along at like 10 to 15 miles per hour on a 35 mile an hour road. I'm still high at that point and I just completely freeze and I get goosebumps. Just imagining all the horrible things that could happen but it just drives but at a creeping speed I asked my friend and he saw it too we both ran back to his house that last mile for some sophomores getting high for the first time that was a very creepy experience I believe I almost got kidnapped posted by Z James 23 I can say this now, that I may have been overstimulated at the time this happened. This happened 20 years ago. I was angry at my parents, being the defiant little kid I was. I had no regard for anyone's feelings. The day was bright, beautiful and crisp. I walked out of school. No, I didn't walk. I had a strut. 
to my gate. I had something to prove. I wanted to prove to everyone that I could get home by myself. I cruised my way down the long sidewalk, not paying attention to anything. The birds were singing in the distance with gusto. Everything seemed okay as my boyish attitude deemed so. The sunlight was beaming and everything seemed okay. I approached a church. Yes, I know how stupid that sounds, but in Utah, a church is a dime a dozen. I heard some voices ahead shouting. The voices sounded like they were having fun. As I got closer, I could see two boys. I could only assume they were teenagers, skateboarding on the rails, laughing and having fun. As I walked into view, one of the boys stopped and looked at me. Hey, want to ride home? as he kicked his board into his hand. I thought quickly, as quickly as an 11 year old could. No, I am almost home, I said. My mind had already been on the two young kids who had been abducted that month. The boys said, all right, but I wasn't buying it. As soon as I was out of sight, I booked it. I ran as fast as my legs would carry me, all the way to a random person's backyard. I sat behind a juniper bush, tucked inside as to hide myself. I waited and listened for what seemed like an eternity. I heard it then the squealing tires of a car pulling around the corner, screeching to a halt. Where the hell did he go? Sounded the voice of one of the boys. Before, I don't know man, maybe he was too much trouble. I heard the sounds of tires screeching off and I was left in silence. I don't know what would have happened to me that day, but it still haunts me to this day. Always listen to your children, because my parents never did. Mental Mary, posted by Ropolist. There was a strip mall in the centre of the east side of the city that I used to live in. It was a fairly popular area, so there was constant traffic in and out. Because of this, It was one of the few places that my friends and I used to hang out at, skating and trying to pick up girls, teenagers, right? It was an okay place to chill and have a good time. Mike, one of the security guards, liked us quite a bit because we always took the time to talk to him and ask him about his day. In return, he looked the other way about us skating in the lot, which was against the rules. As long as we didn't bother any customers, he'd always let us do our thing. Pretty early on, 
he pulled me aside one day to talk to me. He said that I seemed to be the most responsible of the group and he wanted to talk to me about something. I listened in fascination as he told me about a woman known as Mental Mary. Before it's brought up in the comments, I know that this isn't exactly politically correct or anything, but it was what she was called by nearly everybody in the city who knew of her. So please don't waste your time berating me for insensitivity. Anyway, he had told me that she was a very unfortunate woman who suffered from schizophrenia, some sort of personality disorder, and who knows what else. She got her nickname because of her tendency to follow strangers around parking lots, screaming obscenities at them and it was often rumoured that she was violent but he didn't know how much truth there was to that. The one thing he knew for certain was that she was often seen around this strip mall in the middle of the night and cautioned me to warn my friends and stay away from the place after it closed. This was exactly what he shouldn't have told a teenager. Responsible or not, I was intrigued. I told my friends about it right away and was surprised that they had already heard of her when I never had. They said that they'd never seen her, but that there was more to the story than Mike had told me. I asked what it was, but none of them wanted to say. They didn't seem to be interested at all in the woman, so I dropped it. To this day, I can't explain why I was so interested in this, but I was. I decided I was going to sneak out that night and see if I would encounter her. I'll break here to say that while I am now a very cautious person, I was the exact opposite as a teen. I was reckless and full of wonder and adventure as well as perhaps full of shit and I wasn't intimidated in the least by the idea of a crazy person. I did sneak out that night and skate to the strip mall and this is what happened. I didn't see anything out of the ordinary for the first two hours. Just the usual city stuff, a few drug deals, a lot of cars creeping, looking for races. I was solicited by a prostitute, but she left in a hurry when I told her I was 14. Then at about one in the morning, a woman wearing a heavy white coat. This was the middle of August and a tattered pair of jeans walked into the parking lot and spotted me right away. As she came towards me, I became more and more certain that this was Mary. She had a shoe on one foot and was holding the other up to the side of her head 
and talking into it as if it was a telephone. Her head was mostly shaved, but there were random patches of long stringy hair that hung down around her shoulders. Her mouth had that sunken in look that people with no teeth tend to get. I was sitting on a bench in front of one of the stores and Mary came and sat right beside me even though there were several other open benches. She asked me if I had a smoke and I did. So I gave her one. She bit it in half and threw one part down and started to chew the other up. Before long she was spitting it all over the ground. Then she started one of many long rambling speeches. This place used to be nice until the worms came and then there were no more apples. So I went downstairs and put it on top of the funeral. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. I don't smoke. You're only 14, aren't you? Why did you ask me that? Ask me what time I wanted to climb up the wall because I'm tired of people coming here and thinking you can go to the ice cream section of of the gas station and stick your head in there to cool off when I want to cook dinner. As a side note I'll mention here that when I got home I immediately tried to write down the things that she had said as best as I could remember so that I could one day tell this story. I'm not going to reproduce every one of them because it would be a bunch of gibberish for largely no reason but there were things she was saying in the midst of everything that freaked me right out things like above when she had slid the word you're only 14 aren't you into her sentence maybe that doesn't seem like a big deal but people usually put me at 17 or 18 if they didn't know me I waited until she was done and I asked how she knew that I was 14. She smiled a big toothless smile and grabbed at something I couldn't see in the air in front of her and started babbling again. There, it was there in the words. I mean the woods. I mean the wood walls. The word walls inside of a house. He said, don't come here. Did you lock it? Should have locked it. Could be a fire in your pocket. You should lose it. Put it away. I don't mean to be rude, but I can't help you. What I got out of this was, he said, don't come here. Meaning the security guard telling me not to come here after closing. I didn't know if I was being paranoid or reading too much into it, but she was two for two on randomly muttering things relevant to me. I asked her what she meant by, he said don't come here. I asked if she meant anything specific. She smiled and got up, jumped a few times then started screaming at the top of her lungs. I haven't mentioned, but by this point, I was quite disturbed. I'd never witnessed this kind of behavior, and to add to that, I had no idea how she knew anything about me, if she did. I got up myself and started to back up a little bit, 
holding my skateboard to my chest. Her eyes were huge, bugged almost out of her head, and she was frantically pacing back and forth in front of me, and scratching really hard at the skin on her arms as she yelled various obscenities at the top of her lungs. I told her I was sorry as I was backing up and that I hadn't meant to upset her and my voice seemed to snap her out of it. She whipped her head around to stare at me and I froze in fear. She looked evil. She licked her lips and started laughing and chills ran down my spine. Not my fault, not your fault. Should have locked it up after all. It's the only one I can find. I hope it's still there. Did you take it? I want it, bring it to the house, to the couch, the one with the spaghetti stain. At this point, I turned and ran because my family indeed had a couch in the living room that had a big stain in it from an incident with spaghetti. She broke off mid-ramble to scream at the top of her lungs and ran full speed after me. Something hit my back as I ran and I realised she had thrown her shoe at me, the one she had been talking to. Something about this struck me as absurdly funny, even though I was terrified, and I started laughing uncontrollably as I ran. The last thing I heard her scream as I ran sounded an awful lot like the name of my street. I ran for several more blocks to be sure that I'd really lost her and then began to make my way back home. I was tired, confused, scared, and I really wished I hadn't gone to the strip mall that night. I was beyond thinking that the things I'd heard her say were a coincidence. I also knew there was no plausible way for her to know any of that. A part of me wondered if it had anything to do with Mike, if he knew her somehow. I planned on asking him, but he never came back to work. I never saw him again. To this day, I don't know what happened, but the incident taught me a lot about the importance of exercising caution. It could have gone very wrong very quickly with a woman that far gone. Very Creepy Man, posted by Monkey3050. So, I used to work for medical transportation in East Texas. I left the trade due to my middle son getting hurt. Just some info, just in case you don't know the trade. I took Medicaid and Medicare people to and from doctor's appointments. Very good money during the summer, slower the closer it gets to the holidays. My dad worked for the same company almost six years. He took the same guy to and from his apartment cause I didn't feel comfortable taking him After my one and only experience with him, my dad got the same creepy vibe from him. On with the story. So, 
I had been doing this job about three months about this time. This was back in 2018, around August. So this guy, I will call him Jim, lived out in the middle of nowhere. My GPS took me around the world, it seemed. Well, I finally got to his house and picked him up. He seemed normal, looked normal. I didn't get any weird feeling. So Jim was really nice, wasn't rude, and didn't give off this creepy vibe. We talked the whole way to his appointment. His house did give me the chills though. It wasn't creepy looking or run down. It was really nice house, but have you ever just got a feeling that something wasn't right? So I get him to his appointment. About a 25 minute drive and he goes in. I sit there as it was a slow morning. Jim was in there maybe 15 minutes. All he had to do was give blood. So he comes out and gets in the van and we leave. Now Jim started the home trip somewhere along the line of do you drink? Which I answer no because I really don't drink. So it went from okay you're not some pervy perv to okay now I'm not okay being in the same car as you well Jim kept on come in and have a drink I'm like no I don't drink or I'm working which he took the answer for about two seconds and would be like one won't hurt and I finally got a little stern and I finally was like I'm I'm good because I don't know you and I don't think my husband wouldn't like it very much so I'm assuming he gets the hint because he stopped asking we still talked well mostly him he mostly talked about girls and the vacation that he was planning so he shows me a shorter route to his house I pull into his driveway and Jim starts with the same questions trying to get me into his house or at least out of the van but my brain is telling me no I don't have the best past so I wouldn't have gotten out and went in anyway so I keep telling him no I'm working hubby wouldn't like it I tried to stay with the same thing it seemed like Jim didn't want to get out of the van pervy perv signal going off but I just had a feeling he wanted to hurt me more than anything again creepy feeling from the house something about it didn't feel right and he wasn't making it easier. Well, finally I'm like, I need to go. I've got to pick up my next client. Jim just sat there in the van looking at me. So I texted my husband the address while sitting there and told him I'll explain later. But just in case, here is where I am if I don't come home. Well, just at that moment, I hit send on text dispatcher calls and gives me the next three people to call and see if they're, they are going. Jim waves by and gets out and goes inside. I leave and give my dispatcher the lowdown on what happened, as well as my dad. We both worked the same county and we always gave each other info 
on clients, good or bad. How rides went, nice, mean things like that. He never once touched me, but would say you're very pretty, like trying to butter me up kind of thing. I never took him again, and I believe he rode one more time, and that was with my dad, and I worked for the company a little over a year altogether. So Jim, let's not meet again. You may really actually just be this sweet, innocent man, but, buddy, when someone tells you no, just take the answer and move on. And please, let's not meet again. <laughs> guy offered me a ride home, not once, but twice, posted by Sarcasm97. This happened to me last week. Sorry, I'm not a very good storyteller, so please bear with me. I am a 23-year-old female, and I'm like around 4'11 or 5 foot. I was walking home from work. This happens five days a week, so this is nothing new to me. I take the bus from work, and then I get off at a certain stop, and walk halfway to get home. It was a typical Monday night, and I was minding my business, listening to music, with one AirPod, of course so I can be aware of my surroundings. I live in a very safe area and I walk in a town centre with lots of lights, so I felt safer. I was waiting for the crosswalk light to turn on so I can cross the street and a car passes by asking me if I needed a ride but I didn't hear him the first time so I thought I was hearing things so I just went on with my mind I walk the crosswalk and the car makes a U-turn as I was getting off the crosswalk and asked me if I needed a ride I yelled no thank you without even looking at him then he turns around and drives off to a different direction. Okay, I thought that was pretty strange. That's where I became aware more of my surroundings. I talked to my friend for a bit on the phone to feel a little safer, but unfortunately they had to go, so I was on my own. I kept looking back, being scared, and I was the only person on the street, and almost every store was closed, so I can't really find safety at this point. I'm halfway home and I see the car again, and this time I see his face clearly. The man looked like he was in his mid-thirties, maybe didn't seem harmful but you never know right he stops and he asked if I was sure I didn't need a ride home and this time I raised my voice and told him I don't need a ride and he drove off and nothing crazy happened after that but I did get scared that I kept looking behind me but thankfully I was almost home now I'll take the second bus that kind of takes me close to my home 
even though it takes like 20 minutes to get there after I get off the first bus. Nothing big or scary happened, but I thought it was pretty scary. The guy in the ceiling posted by Dames Vader. So this happened probably around 10 or 11 years ago when I was 15 or 16. For a little backstory, the legal drinking age in my country is 18. So if you want alcohol and didn't have a fake ID or a parent to get it for you, then you had to wait around outside the off license liquor store for the Americans until someone came by who agreed to go in and purchase the alcohol for you so we waited around found someone who was willing to go in and buy our alcohol for us and got him to purchase a few bottles of vodka for me and a few friends two of which I was with and the others we were meeting after we'd done this now as it was around 6pm we decided it was too much of a risk to decant our vodka into a less suspicious looking bottles in the middle of the street as it was very busy so we did what we would usually do in this situation and found a nearby food place to quickly run in and use the bathroom to decant our alcohol so we could be on our way this time we chose to do this in a nearby McDonald's we'd done it in before so We knew it was a safe bet, so we go into McDonald's and head straight for the bathroom, as we'd done a million times before. As we get into the bathroom, me and my other two friends, we'll call them Harriet and Cara, all occupy one cubicle to get the job done and get out and back to our drinking ASAP. And as I previously mentioned, we'd done this lots of times before and usually opted to come into this McDonald's as it was usually busy, which meant no one paid attention to three teenagers running straight into the toilet without purchasing anything. So anyway, we're all in there doing our thing when I could suddenly hear a lot of shifting and moving around above us. I figured it was possibly the air conditioning and opted not to tell my friends as I thought it would freak them out. We get the job done and as we're about to leave the cubicle we hear a giggle and where are you girls off to? I was presenting as female at the time. I looked up and see the forehead and eyes of a male who looked to be around 30 just staring out from underneath a tile in the ceiling that he'd slightly lifted. We were all in shock just staring at this guy who proceeded to giggle down at us and ask our names where we were going and if he could come we're all in shock because let's be honest 
who really expects there to be some random guy in the ceiling of McDonald's being a teenager who thought I was untouchable I proceeded to tell the guy that he was a perv and to fuck right off the guy seemed to enjoy this and giggled a little more still shifting around in the ceiling never taking his eyes off us now I should probably mention that along with pouring our drink into the bottles we pre-rolled a few joints so we were terrified to alert anyone at this point as we were young and terrified of our parents finding out the guy still staring at us proceeds to ask questions like what age are you guys where do you live can I have some of your drink and the smoke of your weed still all the while twitching and fidgeting overhead he then started to lift the tile and as we're all stuck in the cubicle with this guy above us we knew the only way for him to get down was to come down directly on top of us so we noped out at that point pretty quickly we went outside and discussed what we were going to do and I decided to go back in and alert someone as it's a very busy McDonald's and I knew there would be women and children in and out of the toilet until closing time I didn't want to risk that creep staying up there just to spy on them especially since I knew he was there and had witnessed his behaviour first hand so I go in, tell a member of staff that I'd been in the toilet for a long while, taking a phone call. Terrible lie, but my 15, 16 year old brain was too scared to tell the truth in case they alerted the police. And that's when the guy had appeared and to my shock, they were completely unsurprised they were just pissed off more than anything. I seen a few male members of staff enter the toilet and I figured they could handle it from there. So I went on my way. We still went in to that McDonald's but never had any encounters with the ceiling guy again. We're not even sure if the guy got caught as we didn't hear anything about it afterwards so to the creepy guy in the ceiling watching the girls bathroom with a bird's eye view let's not meet ever ever again <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.